That's like a normal tiger with a crown. Yeah. It's been on two leaves. Yeah, perfect. Enemy! Like contact! Enemy! Enemy! <laughs> hostiles! Enemy! Hostiles! <laughs> Sorry, yeah, this cut. This, yeah, this, uh, this, look at my deck and pardon me. <laughs> what? Um, yo, 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 freebie. Come on, come on, come on. Claire, what the fuck are you doing? Okay, it's, I'm fine there. I'm not actually an enemy. At the end of the road. I don't know why Peppy made it this. Yeah, it's down to play. Are you going to try to do Oh my god, there's actually music. Operation to see how long it takes us to mess around before we actually do. Yeah, because it's getting us up to the like this. Okay, stop shooting the dancers, they're doing a very important job. Hi, hi. Welcome, boys. As you can see. Oh, well, it's medical training, so it's fine. Gaffer tape, you'll be fine. Sorry, too busy dancing with the AI. He's coming. So, Irish got a captive. Yeah. Okay, well. A new captive. Oh no, not Papadopoulos. No, 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 no. <laughs> Put in the horse racing style, yeah. Alright, is there anyone not here? I'm guessing everyone's here, right? Mm. Except. So. Alright, boys, well, welcome to the Super Mega Fun update today. Uh, we'll be learning a little bit more about medical and also re evaluating some previous. Re evaluating some previous uh, knowledge we thought was correct but is unfortunately <clears throat> not correct. Uh, we got a few things that we'll talk about, but first, if you can follow me. <laughs> the fuck up, man. This is cool. I like, I like to see somebody else knows how to use these platforms apart from me. Alright, alright. So, first area will be in here. Why is there blood in here? Wait, I recognize this I walking style. Oh That's how fucking fuck Putin walks. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Why is Putin? So, uh, this I'm gonna be post these. Hold on, just in general or something. If yeah, you can read them. Because that is pixelated as fuck and I can't read it at all. You can probably just zoom in. Can you stop walking in front of me. Yeah, Shit. it's still fuck pixelated off. as fuck, Pepe. Can Not I only that, but you've got some of the one. hardest reading <laughs> colors there. So, uh, here's how it works. Previously we thought bandaging was as simple as if you have a any type of avulsion, uh, you put on... Uh, sorry, not avulsion. If you have a velocity wound, you would put on a uh, packing bandage, and for any other type of wounds, you would use elastic bandages. Right? This was the norm and the standard. But recently we found out that that's 
probably not the most effective method we can use. Now, can anyone tell me, what do you guys think is current use? Anyone? I mean, the elastics just open up real too quick, don't they? Exactly. So the, how the elastics work, TLDR, is that they're really good at bandaging things so that they close up, but they don't close up uh, forever, and they reopen very quickly. Now, obviously, in a combat situation, that's probably not very useful. Yes. I thought they had a 50% chance to uh, stitch or soft stitch the wound. No. Is that not a thing no. anymore? No. Not, not elastics, different bandages too. Oh. That's a 0% chance for elastic, unfortunately. Um, so, again, they're very good at closing up stuff, uh, but they obviously will reopen very quickly. So, in a combat situation, we don't want to use elastic, because usually we're going to have the common thing of, Hey, medic, please come stitch me. I have only one small cut. Uh, well, fuck you, dude, honestly, right? Uh, we, we've all been there, right? So, we want to minimize this, so we can A, have a little bit better of a time for the medics, so they don't have to stitch around everyone, like, literally, that's their only job. They're better as if they're, like, tailors at this point, rather than actual medics. So, we'll be using different type of bandages. Number one, you have the packing. Number two, you have the quick pop. If you look at your inventory, uh, you'll notice that you also have in your backpack, packing and elastics. I put in elastics only so you can see how they look like or whatever. I don't. In case you forgot. You don't? Oh, oh sorry, that's just me. I forgot about that. Uh, I give you guys quick plot and packing then. Uh, packing is like a little horizontal thing and quick plot, well, you can see on the monitor. They're useful for essentially everything, but they are the most effective in different types of situations. For packing, any type of avulsion that you can find, or medium and large wounds, in general, you should want to you want to use packing. Packing are really good at uh, closing something up and having a really stupid uh, long time before they reopen. I think it's around, what was it, 16 minutes minimum, I think? So, up. Yeah. they're really good at not reopening. This is what you want to use if you get shot. Now, quick plots are a bit of an alternative to packing in a sense that you have a very good chance of permanently closing them. Kind of like a self-stitch. So you don't have to bug the medics all the time. It's a mwah, wonderful thing. And if you read at the bottom, it'll tell you why elastics are probably not the best thing, uh, idea that you want to have. Especially, let's say, if you're critically wounded, you put on a lot of elastic, and you're going to have to keep putting on elastic because you're going to, you know, they're going to reopen, and you're going to bleed out eventually. Now, please remember to use tourniquets. Now, tourniquets aren't supposed to be used if you only have a singular wound on your limb, because why? Jet fire? Because you just die basically but they, they cause no. they, they cause a linearly increasing amount of pain the longer they've been on your limb after two minutes they start causing small pain and the longer they've been on your limb after two minutes they can start causing more and more pain after around 20 minutes they'll just knock you unconscious yeah, not so really short time till you die i'm pretty sure <laughs> one way or another so slightly longer to put on than an actual bandage it varies in the settings you have to, i'll check now so give or take buddy is somewhat right even if let's say they're not faster, even though let's say they're the same speed, you can just bandage yourself instead of tourniqueting, right? But for multiple wounds, you definitely want to put on the tourniquet because it literally halts bleeding entirely. So tourniquets are really, really good. If you get shot a lot in the, in the limb, please put on the tourniquet and do not forget. Anything else we need to mention about bandages, quick? Uh, I would recommend carrying some elastic if you are planning on just straight up getting rid of them, uh, due to the fact that if you get shot in the leg while running across a field and you're still getting shot at, they're quite handy to basically go, fuck, I'm just bandaging and running. Well, if you, got, if you really want to be technical about it, elastic can be useful in a situation where you have multiple wounds and you want to bandage, um, like, two wounds at the same time for only like a minute, but I still would heavily, heavily advise that you use packing or quick cloth. I now would recommend that nobody has elastics, bar maybe medics, but normal riflemen, you guys should not have elastics anymore. They're detrimental, if anything, and they're going to give you a false sense of security or whatever. Anything else, Quick? Uh, no, that's pretty much it. Alright guys, any questions so far? Uh, not really. Yep, great. 
Now on to the main part. Fuck up. So, we have oh Cat Medical. So, we love Cat Medical, don't we? Adds a few things, and by few things, all of it is under one category called Airways. I mean, I guess you could see blood and blah, blah, but whatever. We'll stick to Airways for now. So, Airways. What are Airways? What can we deem as Airways? The melon. What? Air what can we... Yes, Airways. What, what are Airways? What, 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 what do we see as Airways? Right. The first thing that carries air in... <laughs> Pepe, airway is not an actual part, organ. Like, there is it's the not, not an organ, it. right? Look, your, your, your airways no, extend. Okay, I went to check something on the left. Mm. Bro, throat to your lungs, it's what makes you breathe. If you go unconscious, your tongue falls in and you can't breathe anymore. Yes, yes, yes. Very good, very good. So, like you said, airways are, well, for breathing. Anything that has to do with breathing, whether that be the throat, the tongue, the lungs, blah, 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 everything is so someone's in tongue for category. breathing. Well, no, but if you if you start breathing and your tongue falls in your in your throat, then you get fucked. So, uh, we have airway management, which you can find if you go to your uh, medical settings and you well, you can't do it on yourself, but it would be under the airway management next to the normally where you stitch people. Remember, if you want to do any kind of airway management, you need to click on the head. If you click on anywhere else, you will not get the prompt to uh, open up airway management. So, let's say in a situation that you find someone unconscious. Oh no. Well, this is a simple solution on how to see if they're breathing or not. The first up, first check is the check of airways, whether they're breathing properly, blah blah blah. It checks if there's any obstruction and any occlusion. So, Mr. 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 Yeah, Sylvia. Yes. What's an obstruction? What an obstruction is. What's an obstruction? Something that blocks the airways. Exactly. What could block the airways? Uh, vomit, for example? That's a very good one, but unfortunately My not fault. in this case. <laughs> what? It'll, it'll be more of a physical thing. Ah, the tongue. The tongue. Very good, very yeah, good. Pepe. My cock, I rammed it down his throat. Like yeah, very funny, wise guy, very funny. So. If obstruction is for the tongue, occlusion will be for the vomit. How do we clear these two things? Well, for medics it's different, by the way, just so you know. But for riflemen, generally, well not generally, this is literally how you do it. To clear the uh, obstruction, otherwise if the tongue has fallen, you use a guru tube. Every single one has access to a guru tube. You can check if you want to in your backpack. Guru tubes are a very useful thing. Uh, they don't work as well as an alternative that medics have, but they do work, and they're very well. Uh, well very, very good at the job, but they require to do. Uh, just be aware, I believe at least, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but I believe that sometimes it can fail, in a sense like after an X period amount of time, they could wear out and they just stop working. Oh, which means you, yes. Yeah. Which, which means you need to reapply them. <laughs> so be they... careful. If you can't place one in somebody that has vomit and it went it'll fail then. But if you manage to place it successfully it'll stay until they die or wake up. Alright, pardon me then. Uh, and for occlusion, for vomit, you wanna use head turning. Obviously you'll get the head turning uh, within the medical. So um, Mr. Quake, could you Let me to volunteer, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> quote unquote volunteer. <laughs> so if we uh, come over here, one by one if you want to, you can check his uh, head, and obviously you can check his um, airways. There are a couple of things that you can do. Guru tube, hyperextending head, head turning, and airways. Like we said, for a head, you want to use guru tube if, you, uh, if, his, um, if he has an obstruction, which is the tongue. If he has an occlusion, which is vomiting, then you want to do head turning. Hyperextending head is just a shitty alternative of a guru tube. You don't want to use hyperextending head unless you have, uh, unless you don't have a guru tube. Now, obviously, as riflemen, which should be in your standard kit from now on, you will have a guru tube that you can place. I recommend you have around five, maybe ten, if you want to be generous. Thank you, man. What next? Let's see a little monitor thing. So, are we just not gonna fix this, man? No, fuck that guy. 
<laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> There you go, welcome back. Well, uh, yeah, I wouldn't be sure about 5 to 10 girdle tubes. You're only going to need them to help somebody until a medic arrives. So as long as you've got one to get yourself up, really. And that's what counts for the most part. But you know, How are you going to get yourself up? Somebody else is going to do it for you. I think I think it's more of a, like, a, you know, in, in case someone doesn't have it. Like a V-turn. Like someone that isn't on the Super Mega Fun all day and that they wouldn't know. <laughs> but hopefully you guys from now on will know, and you will carry the stuff that we have told you here, because that will be pretty cool, and we will stop dying so much. So, a key thing to remember that Cat Medic... Yeah, Bunny, did you want to say something? No, no, I was just pointing at the retards. Okay. So, uh, a few things that we want to point out is, number one, there's oxygen in your blood, right? That makes sense. Every single person has uh, a certain amount of um, oxygen in their blood. If they have less than 70% of oxygen in their blood, they will most likely die very quickly. Now, the reason why we're doing all of this airway management is so that they don't lose more than 70% of their oxygen in their blood because then they die, and we don't want them to die. So, I will preface this one more time. In the case that they have an obstruction, which is in the tongue, it falls over in your throat, you want to use a guru tube. If there's an occlusion, which is usually vomit, or I don't know what else it could be but vomit, then you want to head turn. Obviously, the normal stuff that you would probably know already is if you find someone, you radio in for help, you see where you're... Oh, actually, you know what? I want to ask... Um, Arash. Where's Arash? Uh, he's uh, got Team Sweet Reasons. He, he's the... Oh, I want to get... Well, uh, then Claire. What? Let's say you find someone unconscious. Mm. Now, you just, you know, start, you know, you were in a firefight, you see someone unconscious, friendly, mm -hmm. What do you do? Like, tell me step by step. What? You find someone unconscious, what do you do? Step by step. Bro, I can't tell you on top of my head, I I just do it. Come on, tell me. Come on. Uh, uh, scream at the top of my lungs and wave ah, my hands. Ah, shut the fuck up, buddy, you're not clear. <laughs> oh, it completely depends on the situation, if I'm completely fucking honest. Like, Maybe. how bad are they? I, I don't know, what do you do? You oh, see okay, someone I'll unconscious- a, I'll open the medical menu and stare at them to see what's up. Okay. Say, say you find somebody in the forest, you didn't know they'd gone down, they've been down for a while, they've quite heavily went. What do you do first? Uh, tourniquet if any limbs are above two, right? Mm -hmm. Bandage head and chest, cry over the radio for ten minutes, Check their airways, check their pulse, cry a bit more, and then sort it out. Okay, uh, Jeffrey, what would you do? You find someone unconscious, I don't know, randomly. Let's say in the next house over. What happens? What do you do? Uh, I look at him, I see who it is, realise he shouldn't have got shot, and move on. Fair enough. <laughs> Go on! <laughs> no, you, you just check him, make sure he's not dying his own vomit like an idiot, and then call a medic, because I don't really know how much of this works. Just get somebody else to do your jobs and man works. It's why we're here, for fuck's sake, Jeffrey. So you know what you're supposed to do. I'm not okay. a medic. I'm... Melon, what do you do? Look at Melon. First, check airways because they are, before they bleed out, they're mostly going, most likely going to asphyxiate. So I'm going to check their airways, clear them first. Once I am sure they're breathing, which I should be sure because they've definitely got a pulse oximeter attached, then. I will um, start checking for pulse and, you know, if they have one, bandage, give blood, stitch, all of that. If they don't have one, preliminarily put on tourniquets and such so they don't lose too much blood and try to get their pulse back up. Okay. I'm seeing some varying answers here. I like it, give or take. But just a, you know, thing that everyone should probably know already, but if you find someone unconscious, please say it over the radio. Number one. Number two, which I've seen an uh, ample amount of people do, which is not okay. If you see someone down, please evaluate where they are in contrast to where they're getting shot from. If someone is literally in the open getting sprayed by a fucking MG gunner, please don't go and immediately try and rush to save him. Because that will inevitably end up in your death. Right? And why is this bad? Is this bad? 
Yes, thank you. Thank you. Imagine there's a four four uh, player team. One person goes down. That's 25% effectiveness loss. If another clown tries to save him and dies together with him, the clown, 50% boys, 50%. Think about that in your head. Okay. So, please, remember where you are. Remember where your friendly is or whoever else is down. Don't try and sacrifice your own life just to save someone. It's that, you know, it's honorable and everything, but you're just a fucking clown if you end up going down. Because someone might not know where you are. Maybe people think you're fine, but you're not fine. Yada yada. And also, if you're seeing someone and they're in a very hostile environment, please call someone to assist you in helping them. Because if someone is down, the easiest way to get them back up is with a helping hand. So if you need someone to help you with medical, as in not just a medic, a fellow rifleman like, I don't know, Jetfire who should be knowing his things, then you could just say, hey, help me out with this guy, I need X, Y, Z. Communication is important. Isn't that right, Melon? Yes. Yes. Any questions so far, guys? No. No. Okay. If you check in your backpack, you'll notice a pulse oximeter. Do you guys know what a pulse oximeter is and what it does? Yes. Does yes. anyone not, not know what this does? Don't be shy. If you don't know, please say so. Jetfire? Look at you. What, what does a pulse huh? oximeter do, Jetfire? Uh, reads the oxygen in your blood. And? So, what a pulse, ex pulse oximeter is, is, well, theoretically, well not theoretically, but it is a thing that you basically put on the end of your finger, and it reads how much oxygen you have in your blood, and also your heart rate. Oh, well, blood pressure technically, but also heart rate. Now, I'm guessing everyone can tell why that's a very important thing, right? Now, I think I could recommend... Buddy, why are you slamming your head from the wall? And why are you naked? Oh, no, 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 no. Definitely not, because I know most of this stuff already. Well, Buddy, did you know about, about the bandages and stuff? Uh, yeah, I did, actually. Me and Sean went through it oh, in 125th. Well, why did you fucking tell me then, brain dead cunt? <laughs> because... <laughs> it's funny. Right, you might think, yeah, sure, motherfucker. You didn't tell me that I actually improved the medical? Piece of shit. So, I realize I have a marker from Tarkov on my head. <laughs> so pulse oximeters are something I recommend that everyone has at the start of the op. So once you start loading in and everything is going yada yada, briefing starts, slap on a, a little pulse oximeter on yourself. It's very useful. Medics will fucking adore you if you have one. Right, Melon? Yes. Yeah, see? Melon is such a Got good it. boy. Do you not carry a pulse oximeter to piss Melon off? I carry ten. If you don't have one, I'll attach two. <laughs> Got it. Do you guys not remember the time when we were in the chopper and Mela just gave every single person a pulse of someone? Chad, honestly. That's Sigma male grind set is what I call it. I mean, I understand why people have, like, the medics have them, but why, do, why does everybody need one? Just put them on you so when you're there, I don't mm. have to use mine and but, then but, wait when you get back up. have to take it off you all over again. put it on before you go down. So in other words, we're running around with a little bit of plastic on our finger. Yeah, you know, what I just said. Why doesn't everybody funny just to have one on to begin with, then? Uh, uh, that's, that's, that's what, what I'm saying. You. What, so you want us to just walk around with a hospital finger attached and on? Yeah, well, the, the special forces do that. It's not strictly on their finger, but it'll be yeah, on their Yeah, I'm, I'm saying, like, in, you know, in the real world, in the hospitals, how it usually looks like. I mean, special forces also have them, but it looks different, <laughs> and maybe people don't know. Um, yeah, well, what, yeah, but I feel like it there'll needs, be a discrepancy due to it what needs a, it, it needs does. a thin part of your body that it can shine a light through. So. Uh, I mean, I'm pretty <laughs> sure most of them could probably attach to it. Okay, okay, fine, okay. So, uh, like I said, if you please remember, bring a pulse oximeter with you, and at the start of the up, place one on yourself because it, you know, time is valuable with medics. The more you're down, the you know. The less good you are, and that's bad, generally. Yes, Jeffrey. But doesn't it glitch out after, like, give respawn? I believe so. Yeah, we're working on that. It might be the right door mod. We're, we're trying to fix it. So, for now, just, you know, heed our, heed our advice. But if anything changes, we'll tell you. Any questions so far, guys? No. Okay. 
Honestly, I think that's about it. Aww. Um, I think this we can round it up here. Is there anything else we need to say quick? Um, oh, right, I forgot about one thing. Sorry. Um, epinephrine. Cool thing, right? Uh, Melon, what does epinephrine do? Increases your heart rate, makes your heart pump faster. Very cool, very cool. So, it also uh, makes you not allergic to things. Yes, also, well. Oh, it, uh, it's a laser it dilator. Uh, it it, it, it suppresses just, symptoms. Yes, it just counteracts the symptoms. You, you're not yeah, allergic. So you're no longer allergic for a short period of time. I, I am not allergic. <laughs> ah, technically, it's the truth. Allergic to that. <laughs> Bad. That actually killed me instantly, by the way. Yeah, uh, that's not good. So, your settings are whack, yo. Really? Wait. Yeah, uh, I, died, got, I died upon impact. And you immediately damage, respawned? Right here? That, that's just me. Okay, the respawn is just mission based, but the actual me dying is server based. That is true. Um, you, you have a we'll, link, sir. We'll test in a second once. Oh, you've, you've got, got, you've got only, only what the fuck was like... that, Pepe? I dare you. Did you just, did you just pull off a fucking jutsu? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Pepe? Yeah. Alright, hold on. Uh, let me try. Uh... We'll, we'll do this after this. After I say this. So, epinephrines are a cool thing that people could use, but there's been a change of plan. We've noticed that epinephrine is really good. Like, it's like really, really good. So I don't want to go too in depth into detail because you guys, you, well, most of you are riflemen and you're not medics, so you don't need to know this. But let's say there's been a lot of subtle changes to the medical settings and how people function when they get shot and what happens and yada yada. It's not perfect, but we're getting there. But the TLDR is that epinephrine actually have a very good usage now in trying to wake someone up. The TLDR is that epinephrine, when you inject in someone that's unconscious, will make... Uh, Make them have a higher chance of waking up. What? No, not quite. So, the, yeah, you've got to be careful the way you word it. The epinephrine will never make somebody who is unhealthy wake up. What epinephrine does is increases the chance that a healthy patient will wake up. There you so go. So if you have somebody that has good blood, good heart rate, no pain, everything's, you know, fandabby dozy, as it were, um, and they're not waking up, and you're in a combat situation where you really need them to wake up, you can risk using an epinephrine on the patient to wake them up faster. How did my corpse just vomit itself? Whack. <laughs> Don't worry about <laughs> that it. That is whack. Forget about it. So, uh, the thing we want to try and say is, it's really good. So medics will want to use it, right, Melon? Yep. There you go. But, oh. because it's so good, Unfortunately, riflemen can no longer use epinephrine. So, you can probably scrap the entire idea of having epinephrine in your loadouts. Well, probably remove those, so you don't weigh down as much. Uh, another thing, a very subtle change, but maybe a noticeable change. If you're by yourself, and you go unconscious, you will not wake up very often, let's just say. Now, this is a little bit to combat people running around like retards, right? So... I would recommend that if you're going in a combat situation, <laughs> if you're going in a combat situation, please be together with someone, whether it be with a battle buddy, whether it be with your entire squad, whatever. Stick together, because if you go down, I promise you, a lot of the time, you will not get up. And not getting up is not, uh, let's say, the most interesting of gameplay. So cool down your jets. Stop running around like returns, and you'll notice a big improvement in not getting killed. Any questions so far? Does that mean I don't have to carry adenosine anymore because people can't overdose themselves on epinephrine now? Uh, for the most part, yeah. No, people yes. will find a way, so... It can still come in handy occasionally, but I'd maybe bring three or four. What? Yes, yeah, so adenosine is going to be pretty... let's say rare in the situation that you're uh, you're only You only need it in a situation where Somebody's already had morphine, but you still need to get their heart rate down further. So you're probably dealing with somebody with a very low blood pressure. Hmm. But just enough to keep them conscious. I got a so somewhat off-topic question slightly. 
Yes. I, I don't know if that's a, if that's a key bind I still have to do, but not, when I press H now, I don't get into the my own menu yeah, go or to someone else's. Escape. Yeah, yeah, you have Conf to rebind it. Go to escape, configure, control. As long as yeah. you're not looking at somebody, it gives it you yourself. Uh, under common. Yeah. And scroll down to last hint. Oh, sorry, last help. Uh, last help. Wait, yeah. I think they're enough better quarter. Yes. Yeah. No, you've I'm got to remove that. that and stop it. Uh, popping up occasionally. Pepe, what does adenosine do? So, oh. you want to actually, Miller, what does it do? Ah, perfect, thank you. I mean, it basically just lowers your heart rate even further than morphine without the um, pain reducing effects of morphine. Basically. So, I shouldn't be. I, so, I shouldn't give it to Pepe then immediately like this? No. No. Like, Even though I still have the ability to. In general, it has very limited use. It just use it. You can just use it either a like Quake explained when you need to lower their heart rate, but you've already given them morphine and you don't want to overdose them on morphine, or b they've taken seven uh, 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 epinephrine like a retard well, and now they're unconscious from their heart exploding. We shouldn't be saying that anymore though, since not everybody can use epinephrine. Yes. So, to be honest, uh, I've Mellon, never seen Mellon Mellon playing as a medic. Melon is right. Apart from one thing, at least to my knowledge, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I remember researching this up. It does lower heart rate, but not more than morphine. Morphine lowers no, it a it, lot it, more. Yeah, adenosine lowers it between 20 to 25. Right. Morphine can morphine. lower it. Well, the thing is, morphine morphine strictly only actually reduces your heart rate by 20 as well. But um, it also reduces your pain, and pain is the primary source of a high heart rate. So by reducing your pain, it will make your heart rate plummet by 50 and then an extra 20 on top of that for the drug itself. The TLDR is not to use morphine unless a medic has prescribed it to you, right, Melon? Yes. Okay, so we have the ability to use morphine, but not the thing that can counter it if it's gone poorly without a medic around us. Yeah. Because you don't use it, essentially. So morphine isn't something that you should be using very often, and if it is, honestly, you should be calling a medic rather than well, doing it yourself, unless you, you know point, what you're doing. Pepe, why don't you just make it so we can't give ourselves morphine Doesn't and... Doesn't cat medical have painkillers? Honestly, well, honestly we, the yeah, thing is, I we don't never overdose on morphine to that. because I just check my own heart rate and blood pressure, and if it, if it both is normal, I can't fall over, and then everything's Gucci. But ah, personally, but this I've is never known to myself kiddo. on morphine as well because that's just can happen. changed things and now it can happen. No, no, no. Huh. It, it doesn't matter. We change things, but it has. We haven't changed how morphine works, for example. The thing is, you're somewhat right, but not exactly. There's a lot of situations where you can go down, even though you have vitals, uh, well, stable vitals, as in like somewhat ish normal heart rate and somewhat ish like actually not really blood pressure, but somewhat ish fine heart rate. For example, if you lost a large amount of blood, that means you have a lowered amount of blood pressure. But you still might have a fairly okay heart rate because you got shot and whatever and blood and blah blah blah. I, you're like, hey, you know what, I can give myself morphine. I have like, I don't know, 90 uh, heart rate, you know, BPM. Look, I can give yourself morphine. Yeah, no, die. this is uh, why, this is why I only do it if both are normal. Yes, but, but you see, Sylvia, you might... <laughs> Just what? Just cool. <laughs> Sorry. So my, 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 I threw I threw my mouse accidentally and I couldn't click my mouse button. So you see, so you're not very dumb, but there are some individuals that don't know these things, right? Right, Jetfire. It's it's it's, look, it's, it's really well, I wasn't simple. Listening. It's really exactly. simple. It is it is a situation of morphine at your own risk. Okay. So, so you you're might not going to be. You're not so is there no solution for the average man to increase heart rate then? Well, there certainly is one um, solution. You know, Te you know, technically, you never, yes, there is. You're never really going to be wanting to be in a situation where you need to increase your heart rate anyway. It's, right? It yeah, really the happen. Murphy's law tends to apply to Delta the a only, lot more than it should. The only thing that can reduce your heart rate. Is, um, <laughs> on the, foot. the only thing that can reduce your heart rate is morphine and the denosine. As long as you're not giving either of those to yourself, you're not going to be seeing low heart rates. Uh, so, and then my point comes back uh, into play. Why not just make it so riflemen can't give themselves morphine and effort? Yeah, because I can I imagine an explosion going off, many. people getting riddled, you getting pushed by enemies and thinking, oh no, I can't aim because I'm painful. Stick a morphine in them, try and fight back and then just fall over two minutes later. So the thing is, um, like it's talk well, morphine, morphine is cool, but just like Quake said, it's a situation where morphine at your own risk, because 
morphine is a very, let's say, dangerous drug if not used properly. Some people know how to use it. For example, Soviet here might not, Soviet might know how to use it. Or maybe Jeffrey doesn't, right? Example. And then, you know, Jeffrey thinks he's slick, uses the morphine, and he fucking falls over. Do you honest, have I've never that? been able to actually make myself unconscious because of my own morphine, but that's mainly uh, because I, I'm one of the few people who can bear I've seen it repeatedly too, Bunny, hence why I'm here speaking about the subject right now. And I so want why to don't we use painkillers? Because you can overdose them, up. because they're buggy. We can try. By all means, we can try, but they are buggy, and you can overdose on them still, the like morphine. The 15th well, we used them without any issue thus far. Cat pharmacy, have... we'll work on that. Cat pharmacy! Yeah, I feel like the pen should just be left to the uh, medics to begin with, because you wouldn't really just see anybody with a morphine pen, would you realistic? No, absolutely no. not. No. And since right. we have an alternative, that's less dangerous. But we can't, the problem the is, is, is we are limited by what we can do in the option set, in the options, and the options don't let us ban morphine. So, you know, we have to work with the fact that people are going to be able to get it out of the arsenal, and therefore they're going to get it out of the arsenal. But the point is, you should only ever give it to yourself if you have a, a high heart rate, or a very high heart rate. Plus 110 is where you're looking at giving yourself a morphine. So, unless you can see that with your pulse oximeter, or you think your heart rate is so high you are about to imminently die, just don't bother. Can a normal person get a reading from the pulse oximeter? Yeah, yeah. Yes. No. If, you hit, if you hit H and look at the pulse oximeter. Another useful thing about it, which is why you should have it. Yeah, if you yes. want to attach it, by the way, I think I didn't explain it, but you have to attach it on a limb, and on I think you can... Yeah, oh, on look, an immediate of death. And, uh, and I think it's by using the exam patient. Exam patient. Okay. So, I'm attached. So, let's have a look at this. And you'll see bottom right, you'll get a Click reading. View, uh, heart rate and, AD. It, and it's live. I'm only doing this display that it's ah! reading, but if I do that, and you look at it, you see your heart rate skyrockets because of the pain. Did yeah. I ricochet and hit van? So you see how now that you're in pain from the wound, your heart rate is rocketed up to 120, right? Mm -hmm. So as I say, plus 110 heart rates from morphine. Okay, so um, doing so this is bad. What are you doing? Because let, let, let's see how plus long it takes for me to just suddenly die. Morphine. Nothing about resting pulse rates. What did you do? Did you get I just gave yeah, morphine. I know, but it's on. It's fine. We're all no, highly yeah. trained, Chris. In, the, in this case, it's fine because you do have a high heart rate. The, big, the biggest danger with doing it now is that a medic comes up and doesn't know you've done it to yourself. Ooh, so that's so kind of why we have triage cards. Yeah, you, yeah you but the things disappear off. The, if, you, if you bandage up about 40 wounds and, and it goes off the top of the screen and you go unconscious, yes. you're going to end up with two Quake, morphines There's, there's a thing called a triage card. It's right next to examine patient and you can easily see how long ago something happened. Yeah, yeah but the, the thing is you don't... Look, look guys. In a combat situation, people for, forget to do these things. Like, you, I it's always easy. check a triage card. Yeah, uh, that's, that's very, do like, I don't listen half the time, but at least I'm yeah, yeah. this, because this has stopped me from overdosing yeah. people so many times. That's, that's, a, that's a cool thing. You should. But there's a lot of people that don't. So, always, like, what, what, what was that thing that people say when you're driving a car? Like, you can trust yourself and everything, but don't trust the other driver. Like, always Everybody make sure... Everybody else. You... Exactly. So, in the situation that you have given yourself a morphine, or you've given someone else a morphine, please make sure to tell others that you've done so, because... I've seen situations happen where someone hasn't said it and then given another morphine yeah. and then, oh no, I give it now! We, we should have a triage setting up non-minimal, de delayed, immediate deceased, and then one in blue that's just, I've given myself a fucking morphine with like four exclamation marks. <laughs> right, keep people okay, around. this is a funny guy that made me deceased to the triage. Oh, sorry. Oh, that was me. Okay, <laughs> thank you. So, or, or, or we just tell people there's a triage card, you can push it, Go look at how, like, long ago this person gave himself yeah, morphine. But, 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 uh, no, okay, so, so again, no, obviously, but again, it comes back to morphine at your own risk. If somebody doesn't look at it, you're going to get double morphine, then you could have just not taken that risk. Can the can the that's why I'm like saying like just off. tell people it's there. No, so um, it. no it can bug out there, which like, it's look, learned to do a bit. We can tell people repeatedly, but there will always be the eventual case where someone doesn't. So again, we're not taking it, it's not getting taken away, you can still give yourself morphine, but at your own risk, uh, ultimately. Uh, no, no, no medic's going to kill you on purpose, but it just, it's just yes. adding extra factors to the equation. Yeah. The, the thing well, we always well, want I to try and... I have had uh, a medic try kill me on purpose. The thing we always try and well, would want to strive for is consistency, right? So we want to be consistent when we're doing, and if we consistently say that we've given ourselves morphine or whatever, the chances of someone giving you a double morphine is pretty low, right? 
Unless, I don't know, there's explosions happening everywhere and he can't hear you, but, you know, shit happens sometimes. So, all in all, in general, please mention the fact that you've given yourself morphine, if so. And for the medics, uh, epinephrines are of use, and for riflemen, epinephrines are no longer a thing that you should have. Switch it out. The TLDR for this training, as of right now, is please remember to switch out elastics. They're not useful unless you're a medic and there's like some sort of, let's say... Are they not the fastest case. to apply? The... They are the fastest to apply. That's why yeah. I recommend carrying at least five or six, because like if you get shot in a field, you're out in the open, it's quick to pull it on, well, and the... you can <laughs> run away from where you're being shot at. A quick, quick fix. Don't go out into the open and get shot and expect to survive. Um, so, uh, the thing is, if you want a little bit more, you know, a tiny bit more information, how elastics work is that I have a really high chance of uh, bandaging multiple wounds. So let's say if you have three large avulsions on your leg... But not large. Oh, okay. You have three medium or three small. Three medium, sure. Three medium avulsions, and you have a pretty high chance of bandaging, let's say, two at once, or one and a half, which you would get, you know, a bandage and a partial. So... They're good at bandaging multiple wounds, but they suck ass at actually, like, containing them for a long period of time. But so, they are yes. guaranteed to reopen at some point, yeah. and the shortest time they can reopen after is around right. a minute. Right, so their use is mainly just to delay the inevitable so you can get yeah. something proper yeah, so on that's it when why you're not they being shot Essentially, at. they're brilliant for a point man shit for everyone else. Well, they're brilliant for a medic, because the yeah. only situation you should ever be using elastic bandages on yourself is one where you're going to stitch up immediately afterwards. Yeah, so basically... Yeah. A medic having it on hand, if you have way too many wounds, is useful. Or a medic stitching themselves up real quick so they stop bleeding while treating their patient is also good. But no, because a, a point man should still hold it. Because it's like, if a point man goes in first, gets shot, he can apply a pack... Uh, and how many people in our unit are point men, Say again? How many people in our unit are point men? <laughs> unit? Yeah, I, I can name about four people who will uh, basically run in guns blazing. One of them is sat behind me. One of them is named Roach. Don't one wounds on the leg cripple you, though. Yeah. And there's oh, the fourth one? Yeah, so long as you don't have them bad, oh, then you'll start walking through yourself. So, I mean, like, okay. look, no one's stopping you from taking elastic. Yeah. But they just take saying... up space. And, yeah, you know, just... and they're terrible. Yeah, so we're saying if you yeah. take them, take little and take more of the others. And yeah. make sure to only use them when, you know, you deem appropriate, which is almost never. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, everybody will be pleased to know, so just a little tip if you can try and hold on to it. But for all, so this is, this is one of those kind of classic medical rules. For all small wounds that aren't small avulsions, right? So this is the small velocity, small cut, small laceration, small everything else. Quick clot will close it in one. one. We'll have an 80% chance for that wound to never reopen again. And on the 1 in 5, 20% chance where it does reopen again, it will do so after 20 to 30 minutes. So small wounds that aren't avulsions, throw a quick clot on it, it'll save you so much time and effort. They're incredible. So these are a little bit of the tiny, tiny little details that you can get into. Like, th these are the things that we'll probably teach the medics um, another time. Like some, you know, throwing in numbers and statistics and being like, okay, so, you know, in this type of scenario, this is what you want to use because these are the numbers. For you guys, I don't want to bore you for too long because I think that's a bit... I'll, I don't think Jeff is ever going to remember this. I really doubt it, at least. What? So, oh, exactly. So, just remember the, you know, the basic stuff that we just taught today. Number one, try and use packing whenever, or unless it's a smaller wound, use packing club. Remember to check airways and remember to use these things in case this or that happens. Obstruction, you use Gudo tube. For occlusion, you use head turning. Remember to call your local medic whenever something goes wrong or if someone nearby to help yeah. you out. Don't go by yourself. And also, uh, yeah, that's all. The, the, the most important taking point for any rifleman, if there's one thing any rifleman can try and remember at any cost, there's only actually two things you need to do in our current system to prevent somebody from dying and respawning. And if you can prevent somebody from dying and respawning, a medic can get to them, blah, 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 blah. All you need to do as a rifleman is stop people from dying. There's only two things you need to do that. The first is you need to make sure their airways are clear and keep their airways clear. So clear vomit, place a girdle tube, keep checking their airways periodically to make sure they haven't vomited again. 
if you want a, a quick fix, User disconnected you can check from your the pulse channel. oximeter, and anybody that doesn't have a hundred specific oxygen has an obstruction or something of some kind, unless it's actively going off. Then, once you've got their airways clear and you're keeping their airways clear, all you need to do is give them CPR, right? They they can be they can be bleeding out of everywhere, all over the floor, and as long as their airways are clear and you're giving them CPR, you keep blood going to their brain, you keep oxygen in the blood. You keep them alive until a medic gets there. Thank the most you. important thing. I think that's about it, guys. Unless someone has a question. Or I have a curveball. Yes. We've talked about all the different types of bandages, gurgle tubes, and all that, but there's one thing that nobody's talked about, and I know it's kind of irrelevant, but there's one thing I've noticed. All the bandages have a kind of a specialty to them. Unless they can do multiple quick clots, don't come off, packing, I forgot what that one does, but it does something. But what does the field dressing actually do? It has um, marginally. It has it has this pretty poor reopening times, User similar to the elastic. But it has permanent closure. So I've, we've talked about soft stitching, which is bandages that have a chance to never reopen. So field dressings have quite a high so, uh, soft stitch chance. Not as high as quick clot, but higher than packing so they're kind of a middle ground between quick clot and packing we're choosing to avoid using them because we feel like the low reopening time on them makes them worse but strictly if you really wanted to you could use them as a a spammable quick clot something that can close quite a lot of wounds quickly and they will reopen a few minutes later but once you've rebandaged yourself about three times with field dressings you're permanently stitched a little okay. bit painful so they're just they? kind of a somewhat better curveball elastic then. They they do kind of. <laughs> nah. it, look, it, this is a problem because like you said, yeah, all we can, have we their can own get into specialties. the details. Yeah, exactly. They, they all have their own specialties and niches mm. and stuff. But it's it's kinda like it depends on the situation, right? Hence why we're choosing to go with packing as a main bandage from now on because covers most of the situations that you can find yourself in and basically not have a bad time at all right because with the elastic you would get shot and they would reopen in a minute and you're like fuck man you know i need to stitch myself otherwise i die right this is the problem we want to avoid hence why packing is cool because you won't reopen uh, at least like maybe 20 minutes later so most situations you'll be fine yes there are more effective bandages in some situations but in the grand scheme of things packing are cool so if you don't want to be like a effective method freak scary packing and you'll be fine uh any other questions guys uh yeah from me yes uh, from medical side so um i've heard that we've done some changes to the king lt because it was effectively the same as a google tube but way better so have we done any changes to them besides making the medic exclusive um, we tried to up usage time on them, but I don't think it's really noticeable. And for some reason, Cat doesn't let you push it above uh, 10 seconds. Oh no, Peppy didn't save that change. Can All you right. go in that now and save it? I thought it didn't feel as bad. Um, well, if you go right. into... see you guys. Oh, yeah. Okay. See ya, so... Anyway, uh, so... Is there an arsenal, Peppy? Bas but, basically, but... A, King L a King LT is a girdle tube that somebody can't vomit back into. The difference I, is I, girdle... I know the that. Girdle... Yeah. Okay. So yeah, the, the the only difference apart from that is the only medics User can use disconnected them, and they the take camera. longer. Oh. Okay, oh, but so, I can hit you. So in conclusion, we as medics don't really need in the gun. I was thinking of gun to take it. <laughs> no, that actually hit. Oh, it hit um, you. You can maybe carry one or two girdle tubes Small on you. So if you go down <laughs> and a rifleman Not finds the you, have, they like, can yeah, put a girdle tube in you. But there's no need to carry more than like two of them at least, really. I think you're a yep. fracture as well. Oh, I, well, I guess there's also there's also the possibility you could restock riflemen. They ran out, girdle tubes have forgotten them. Mm -hmm. You drop them, but yeah, you okay. get you go to. Uh, I'll... Is the equivalent of the girdle actually um, reusable? The girdle's not reusable now. Not the equivalent of the have... The king of the king of the No, not unless you want everybody to have herpes. You can't. Makes no Right. One last thing. I need to see if that earlier was a fluke. Or the death ah! isn't there. Ah, oh, he's faster it seems. Yeah, if he's yeah, um, unconscious. Okay, he's gonna go okay, somebody dome right, me again, because so, so he may what, maybe what just a B thing. You put one more in. Ah! Pepe, can you pop an arsenal down for me? Yes. Juice the heart rate so he can get back up again. Bunch the head. Um 
It is right outside. Uh, one second. If I had to take a guess, Jeffrey, maybe you collided with one of the objects and it flipped out? Maybe? Yeah, Pepe, my original actual medical stuff, uh, back from when I first started, was actually just a uh, quick plot on elastic. Because it was like a 90% chance yes, of you huh? basically just fixing a one like that. So that's head turning. So, su so suction is obviously to like do that guy, right? And what can you do that from from his throat? Either two things: it either could be vomit or it could be spit. So, yeah. in any case, you'd still need to jam something up his. Oh? Oh. So basically, medics medics bring a, a vacuum cleaner to suck people's vomit out, but it's heavy, and the rifleman can try and hit the vomit out of the back of somebody's head. Uh, I don't think he's in. Oh. Okay. That's interesting. Well, no? I wonder if I wonder if that's a bug from the um, animations mod. Oh, hello. Oh, I, just... uh, I do have yeah. something. Let me take my helmet off because the helmet can has a chance to basically take the ring but still put you unconscious. So... Silent sponge. I mean, it, uh... it, if you wanna. Yeah, once you make him... He... No, people won't, people won't die until they, um, until they... I feel like, I mean, I feel like I shouldn't, but it's basically... Okay. Again, even, even with somebody like this, if you cleared their airways in VR, you could get them back on. No, Melon's fine, we're just waiting. No, remember, he's, rem he's, he's failing the chance to go. Remember? Remember to- wait, no, 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 sorry, 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 No. Yeah, literally. Remember to turn it to the sun when I was also. Yep, there yeah. I am again. Uh, Me Melon just had a, um, a bloody TF2 random crit, basically. Yeah. I guess that's the, that's the only thing to explain it. I guess. Oh, guys, I think that's about it. Unless there's another question, perhaps? Yep. Van, you? You've been awfully silent. Oh, Van, where do you use GuruTube? Or when? When they... Look at the thing behind you. Read the thing. No. Read the thing behind you. Read it. Read I've the never thing actually you... encountered the obstruction. I've seen vomit, but I've never actually seen the obstruction. So, what the good old dude does, basically, if you kind of want to know, is it kind of like places your tongue no, just, like, permanently in a position where it's not going to fuck you up. Hey, listen, I'm talking for bits. your benefit, piece of shit. What, what are you really want about? Not you, motherfucker. It's yeah, not I'm working yet. We're working on it. So, good tubes are basically a thing that you place in your mouth, well not you, but a man place in your mouth, so that your tongue can't fall into your throat and you choke. Just as an FYI. Okay, jump on. Uh... What can I ask you? What does atropine do? I'm not in the game. You wouldn't know. Um... Would Isn't you... it? Uh, I used to do know that, but I forgot what it is. Isn't it came for the effects of epic? No, that's the definition, but I know it's on the game anymore, and it never did anything. Actually, we used to, well, at least what it said it's supposed to do is counter any kind of chemical warfare stuff. Oh, that's actually pretty cool. What? I guess they never... What are you getting off PG? Oh, I raised your heart rate and one that rapidly dropped it. Can you not no shoot the airliner? Train. It's a prop, that's why. It's a prop, yeah. <laughs> I, I think... I... Hey, hey, Jafar. What? We'll look above you. Well, it's a good thing that... Thing, it's a good thing that doesn't have physics enabled. Oh, shit. Uh, I can't crush any of it because we're under, like, the tent. And I made the tent undestructible. Haha, get wrecked now. Well, guys, I think we can uh, end it up here. Um, if anyone has any questions after this, obviously feel free to hit me up. Yeah, we are going to be using green mag at some point.
What's the next KP live? Um, good question. I think we have a. We should do it tomorrow for this one. No, because we're doing uh, bunny elf. Maybe Probably like the next yeah. two days. Okay. Well, we've we we really like good armor in the we're past few weeks. Really, we're getting really bad numbers recently because we're only announcing stuff like a day before. We're getting like five, six. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I've been I've been doing it at least a minimum of a day. Come on. That's not that's still you've been doing enough. it literally like uh, British standard time, twelve o'clock beforehand. And these so everyone days poops before, up and sees the day the office. <laughs> and we're going to fall back to that. Well, you're you're getting people you're getting people that would never miss an op missing an op because they organised something thinking that there wasn't an op. Okay, okay, I'll do it for the next bunny up. I'll arrange it probably now. Oh, wow. <laughs> you shot the fingers. Anyways, guys, uh, thank you for doing. I'll keep the mission file up. You guys want to keep that stuff? Yeah. Uh, right. Now all we're going to do is break the fence. My medical knowledge was. Yeah, when we get the medical training up, we'll do it for all the minutes. User disconnected from your channel. Sorry, man. I had to do it to you. User disconnected from your channel. User disconnected from your channel.